Inside the Birds is back. What's going on, everybody? Jeff Mosher and Adam Kaplan here. It's our post-game podcast. The Eagles have lost to the Tampa Bay Bucks, 28 to 22. Adam, you know that expression uh, in a car? It's objects in the rearview window may seem closer than they appear. Yeah, the old sticker you used to see. It's kind of like this <laughs> final score. 28 to 22 makes it a lot closer than this game was now did they have a chance there in the fourth quarter if they could have just forced one more stop maybe but then you gotta you know you get the ball back your punt you have to go the length of the field which they were not really able to do I mean two of their three touchdowns were were because of long penalties that put them in the red zone offensively they did not muster anything to get themselves in the red zone but the bottom line is the Buccaneers had almost 200 yards more of offense than the Eagles so this game was not that close it wasn't right. Uh, in fact, when the Bucks went up 28 to 7, it sure seemed like they they were playing just to pad the lead. They started running the ball more, which typically you do when you're up 21. You know, you score early to win. You throw a lot more than you run. That's what most teams do in the first half. They got a big lead and they ran and Bruce Aarons will probably beat himself up after this because they were very conservative in the second half. In fact, they only scored seven points, didn't score in the fourth quarter. Uh the first couple drives, Eagles defense was so bad. They were not competitive. They did no resistance. And it looked like it was going to be an absolute blowout smackdown. I thought it looked like the the, the Bucks would score a minimum of 40. They only wound up scoring 28. Uh, now, I'll give Gannon credit. They, there were some adjustments. Um, they started to play a little bit more guys in the box, mm-hmm. put a little bit more pressure. Because in the beginning, he was just playing coverage, giving up way too much space to my player of the game. Coming into the game, which was Antonio Brown, he had a phenomenal game, 9 for 93 and a touchdown. Right. Um, they gave too much in the intermediate area. But, look, I, it was one of these games where you go, this is going to be ugly. This is exactly the way we thought it would be. And then, wow, what, what's going on here? Th- th- this is crazy. And then Jannard Avery has a bonehead play. Oh, Absolutely man. was taunting. The exact epitome of the rule. He knew they were going to put emphasis on this. The players knew this because – it's been explained, and that this also Nick Sirianni, the head coach, clearly does not get through to his players. This is absolutely on him too. The lack of discipline with his football team is an absolute pathetic joke. It's just embarrassing. I mean, they they fight fight back, show a lot of heart to fight back, mm-hmm. and this is what happens. I get it, Jannard Avery. He it's on him first, but you've got to get through to your players. You just not, he's just not getting through to his players, and um, I don't know what you do. You know, some people say that. Uh, with, with all the penalties, some of these guys should be benched. Now, the only positive, Jeff, with the, the penalties is nine nine in the last game for this one. Only four this game, but one which at, I don't want to say it cost them game, but it, it was very very painful. It contributed to the the, the you know the end and the loss because uh, the first play on that before the penalty they stopped, and then you have the, the bonehead play personal foul fifteen yards. And clearly, if you watch it, he tries to intimidate. Fournette, after he gets up, you got to know better, man. That's just that's just embarrassing. Come on, I mean, can't it's, do that. It's, you're right. You are right that they've. It's it's kind of like this. It's a different but same relationship. That you knew this year they're going to crack down on how RPOs are being called. So the Eagles have made that adjustment. You haven't seen an illegal man downfield, I think, in the last two games. But you also knew that they were going to crack down on taunting. We're not one or two games into the year. We're several games into the year now. You already saw uh, Derek Barnett has been plagued by personal fouls. Team discipline has to be important and clearly, as you mentioned, not getting through. You're right. I put it first and foremost on the player, but you cannot absolve the coach and the staff for yeah. you know cool. these things continuing to happen. That's, that's absolutely fair. Um, n- ah, so here's the thing. We're going to go through this, and we're going to point out things that were bad, and we're going to point out some things that were good. And I know people want hellfire and brimstone, you know, I didn't think the Bucks were uh, the Eagles were going to win this game, so I'm only going to be critical of things that I thought they did poorly. But I did not think that they were the better team. And I, again, I didn't think the score was as or the game was as close as the score made it look. I will say this though, on the on the positive side, this is the second week in a row that the Eagles have kind of had a better late third, fourth quarter, showed life. And I'll say third because even against Kansas City, you know, they were able to come back from a, a yeah, deficit and try fought, and they fought. Game. Sure. They fight. They don't give up. Sure. Right? You know, we said that sure. about Doug Peterson's team, too. So I don't know how much of it is on coaches or players in general or just the ebb and flow of an NFL game. But I've seen teams just completely, you know, flatten out. But no, the Eagles fight hard. They, you give them that. Yes, I agree. 
Very good. All right. I'm glad we agree on that. Um, so there's a, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff. I thought you were going to fight me it, on that. No, no, no. It's it's true. It, it That's encouraging. As bad as Hurts played for a majority of the game, he fought, he clawed, his mechanics, throwing off his back foot, moving. You'd pointed this out like three games ago. He he does this drop back. He drops, drops back, and tries to throw off his back foot. He, he, his arm is not strong enough to do that. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, his accuracy was poor. Uh, he he has to pass target, wait for the ball. But, he, but again, he does fight back. Uh, I give him credit for that. Uh, the RPOs are not working with the run game. The, the run game is – I, I mean, at least it's – no, they're, they're, I, you say run game? <laughs> I know. It's funny that they ran it late. I was like, and, and then Ake was like, wait a minute, they better hurry up here. It's just funny that they ran it of all things. Like, what are you running it now for? I know. Um, but hey, Sanders had a couple nice runs late, but yeah, you give him heart. This is a young football team. Um, mm -hmm. The head coach needs to get himself together. Just another overview point, because a lot of this is overview, uh, big picture. He does not do a good job of scheming these guys open. They're not. They, this is, you know, we haven't talked about in months, and shame on me for not bringing this up. I, I should have put this in my notes last week because I know it was on my mind. The lack of having a veteran receiver with this group is absolutely killing them. These guys <laughs> cannot win on their own. Absolutely we have cannot. brought that up, but not in a while. You're right. Not I enough. It's it. on me. Yeah, I should have brought it up a couple weeks ago. But well, and by the way, the that is, that's one of the points that I wrote about uh, in my observations piece that's up on InsideTheBirds.com. Nice. So you and I have some telekinesis going on because we did not talk about that. But I thought this game was a real – illustration of wide receivers just being so young and raw. And listen, they weren't they were, they were not the problem. But you look at where the targets were. Zach Ertz was six. Why do you think that is? Because Zach Ertz is a veteran, knows how to get open. He was missed a few times. Last week against the Panthers, he was second in targets. All right. And then if you put him his and Ertz's targets together, tight ends were targeted a lot against the Panthers. Well that's because they're your more veteran guys, your playmakers. They know how to use their bodies. They know how to catch, uh, make tough catches. They're just – they have experience. Devontae Smith's yeah. very talented. You know that. But w when you're relying on three guys, one of them who's only played five games in his career, the other one, Quez Watkins, played eight, and Jalen Rager has played, what, 10 or 11 in his career because he was hurt a lot last year. I don't know how many games he's played off the top of my head. Yeah. But you're going to get mistakes. I mean, again, it's not Quez's fault that the pass wasn't thrown well, but he tried to play defensive back, and he completely whiffed on trying to bat that. But in fact, it, in trying to play D-back, the ball went through his 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 arms and into, uh, I think, Jamel Dean's hands. And there were just other plays that you see wide receivers. who they just It's not there for them. They've got a lot of upside, but they need so much coaching. We said that in the offseason. And I do, I do think that – I'm not making excuses for Hurts. I think he did not play well. But there are times he is hurt by just not having, like – like an Emmanuel Sanders, somebody who just yeah. knows how to run the exact yeah. right route at the right time. You saw Antonio Brown do that. Um, oh. just, just knowing where to be every single time and playing mistake-free football is something that Jalen Hurts doesn't have in his cast of wide receivers. And yeah. That's um, not about it. Yeah. The, the positive for Hurts is I love the, the, the last touchdown. Uh, that was it. I like I liked just the design of that run. Uh, the fit, you know, like it might have been. I did. I we're not seeing the coach tape here, but was it a fake pitch or was it just it looked like he was going to go right and then he ran it right up? Mm -hmm. uh, I like that. Uh, again, I like his heart. He just needs major work on his pass mechanics. It's it's just the footwork. It's it's lower body mechanics need to be better. Uh, the defense, you know, part of the problem. The Eagles got ball control to death in the game because they couldn't get off the field in the first half. Right. Uh, that 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 was a real problem for them. And as you said earlier, I mean, it's 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 amazing that they were able to be in this game late in the second half. They really shouldn't have been. But uh, as you said, Carolina game, this game, Chiefs game, at least they, they pushed the Chiefs in the second half. But in the end, they're just not good enough. They won't ever be good enough this season to have a winning record. There's not enough talent here. Um, but yep. I, I do yep. like how Gannon did adjust a little bit. You know, we'll, we can get in him in a couple minutes. Uh yeah, you knew, definitely. You knew that I work. think, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I thought, I mean, I know people are killing Gannon, but you know, it's a it's a pick your poison league. You're either going to get beat over the top if you don't yeah. have great personnel, or you're going to give it up underneath. And his philosophy is, I I know I don't have the the great coverage personnel, so let me just keep it underneath. And so they get yeah. beat underneath. They don't have great personnel underneath. They have good they defensive don't. line, but you know that's not what we're talking about. So I, I'm, I'm sure if he played eighty percent man defense, then. 
Mike Evans, who did not do very much in this game. I think he only had two catches for 21, seven yards. Yeah, go ahead yep. and try to play man defense against him all night. I bet you he would have had 10 catches for 150 yards. It's it's a pick your poison league. They turned the ball over Tampa Bay. They had yeah. a few punts. So Gannon could say, look, we, we got what we wanted. But I put this on the offense. The offense did oh, not yeah. generate yep. enough. They didn't keep the ball out of Tom Brady's hands. They didn't sustain long drives. And so we'll get into that. You mentioned something on Jalen Hurts backpedaling. I want to get into that as yeah. well as we break down the offense. We'll, we'll start with that first. But um, I also want to remind people to get an advantage over your sports book on NFL action this Sunday. And you can do that using BetQL, the only app you'll need to make smart bets. We've been telling you about their best bets computer model. It scans over 350,000 unique bets a year to give you a best bet recommendation for every game across all major sports. And it gives you the reason why you should place the bet. Their model covers everything from spreads to over-unders, player prop bets. And if you don't want to use the model, if you're a researcher, that's cool because BetQL has all the necessary tools for your betting research needs from sharp data to line movement, team summaries, lineup and injury breaking news. They even have a leaderboards to track your success. So just go to the App Store or Google Play Store now, download BetQL. You can also go to try.betql.co slash ITB to get started. Enter the discount code ITB at payment checkout for 25% off their subscription offerings. And you can check out their subscription offers page if you live in one of the eligible states to claim free offers upon signing up at one of the many sportsbook listed. So don't miss out on the chance to beat your sportsbook this fall season using BetQL. All right, so as we start with the offense, um, there's another observation I made, and, and honestly, I can ask a million people on the team that no one's going to say it, no one's going to admit it, and he's not the first quarterback to not be 6'4", 6'5", but I sense in the way the middle of the field, he struggles um, to, to make some throws there sometimes, especially if there's a little bit of a pinch of the pocket, I wonder if he's only six foot one, right? If I'm if yep. I'm not mistaken, correct. I mean, you've got yep. some pretty big Steven, behemoths Steven. up in front of him. Not Kelsey, but you've got you know Landon Dickerson's a big guy, sure. and uh, your right guard is um, uh, Driscoll, who's a tackle. He's like six six. You know, he's got a tackle frame, um, and of course, your your two outside tackles are, are pretty tall too. And when that pocket pinches in on him, it seems to me he not only is a backpedal, he's almost like arching. Like I wonder if he does not really see the field as well as someone who's six, five, six, six, like most mm. of your pro, quote unquote prototype quarterbacks are like Russell Wilson is also short and Drew Brees is short. Those guys are really um, good masters though at sidestepping pressure so that when that does happen, they, they open up their vision lanes themselves by how they move around the pocket. He backpedals. So he doesn't really move all, into a clear lane. He's just buying himself more time. I, I don't know if that's an issue, but it's, it's just something I observe when I see him try to throw over the middle when the pocket just pinches a little bit on him. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, what? what's disappointing about that is, you know, he's in shotgun almost all the time. And right. you should, because it gives you a clearer vi vision, a clearer view. Mm -hmm. That should not be a problem. Because that's why Russell Wilson's in shotgun, because he can't see. Right. right. Um, it, th their lack of a physical presence over the middle. There was, they had no, uh, it is an ongoing problem. It's probably one of the top three issues with this offense. They have zero physicality over the middle. I get it. Goddard didn't play in this game because he's on the COVID list. That mm -hmm. crushed him. They really could have used him. And the fact that Ortega Whiteside doesn't play on offense other than the block, uh, he's 6-2. It, 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 that crushes them too. They just don't have anyone who could who's a physical pass target. Right. That really hurt them. And, boy, the Bucks completely shut down their offense in the first half. They just yep. – it was, it was like – it was almost like a car wreck how bad their offense was. And here's another thing. Uh, I know we have a stat from Next Gen Stats weeks ago about how much Jalen Hurts throws to his right. It's unbelievable. Everything's a roll out to the right. Even when it, I know sometimes he just moves when he shouldn't move and he rolls out to the right. right. Maybe it's to create space to throw, but that's another problem. Why is everything to the right? That's a great question. <laughs> I wish I could answer that. I, have I just noticed it's, it is really it's egregious. A tendency <laughs> as a right handed quarterback who has run a lot, especially in college, that he probably just gravitates and looks. Toward the right. I mean, that's that's why yeah. they call the left side the too blind predictable. Side. But I tell you what, I mean, I, I think he may have underestimated the speed of Shaq Barrett and some of the guys oh. on the front because yeah. while he did have his runs, he ran ten times for forty four yards. That's not a big average for him, four point four a carry. He certainly at times and I think he ran out of bounds a couple of times just to get away from the pressure. There was one time he tried to throw it while going out of bounds too, and it hit that he almost got intercepted. That was that was risky. That's tough, but but oh, that's Barrett, 
Yeah, Barrett, Tryon, those guys coming around the left edge were up on him fast. I was I was actually impressed, and I've watched the Bucks. I just I didn't think Shaq Barrett could chase down Jalen Hurts that well, and he did. Yeah, a couple, couple fit problems on offense before you go to defense. Think about this. The Bucs are without – Richard Sherman hurt his hamstring in the first quarter. He didn't return. Mm-hmm. They're, they're playing D. Delaney, who's really only a special teams player. He had to play significant minutes at, at corner. Uh, Jamel Dean, who was their nickel to start the season, he's he now plays on the outside. And Ross Cockrell had to play, who was really a fourth corner best. It, it they should not have this kind of problem. This is the this is where you don't have a veteran receiver who knows how to get open. Yep. This is it was tough, and it, Vita Vey is so strong. <laughs> I love that guy, he, man. He's awesome. He, he's, uh, he's 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 a moose. He's in there. He's so strong. Moving and uh, Sue got him. Sue and. Uh, Sue and v, Vita Vea got credited for uh, four quarter, quarterback hits between two of them. Yeah. It, it it was tough watching this offense. It's really hard. Yeah. Speed speed only matters when these guys, guys can get open. You could you could have a bunch of guys who run a 4-2. It doesn't matter if they can't get open. They cannot get open. This is on the coaches, too. This is absolutely on the coaches. Your job is to scheme these guys open. They do not do a good enough job. I get it. Hurts misses throws. He missed throws in this game. Not only was he inaccurate on some, he didn't see them. Uh, Greg Cosell made it very clear from his tape study. His eyes dropped too much. Um, I know this is not the offseason, so you can't cure all these issues, but these are the issues that are ongoing with this football team. And guess what? This game became winnable. It shouldn't have been, but it it became winnable or tieable to push it to a potential overtime. Although, of course, they went for two and got it, or at least to take the lead if they would have got a touchdown late. But the problem is self-inflicted wounds. Mm-hmm. Quarterback was not good enough. I give him credit for bringing him back uh, when he got a chance to. Showed some good heart and some fight. But in the end, this team is so limited uh, at the receiver position because they're so young, and, and the co- the head coach, play caller, is not doing a good enough job to help these guys. Remember, you know, a month in, or a couple of weeks before the season started and we talk about well, what's going to be the stronger point of the team, the offense or the defense? Neither neither is a strong point right now, but yeah. the last two weeks, it's certainly the not the offense, the strong point. The defense has been yeah. more they hung in there. of a strong mm-hmm. point. Uh, and, and listen, yep. I'm not patting them on the back for giving up 28, and it could have been 35 if they wanted to on that last drive. But still, um, they did get the turnover, forced a few punts. You know, you're facing a great, great offense. But and it didn't help that you're you were on the field so much because your offense couldn't move the ball. I mean, they they had the ball twenty minutes in the game. Yeah. And uh, by the way, Sipos did not. Have, it was probably his worst game as an Eagle. He did not punt the ball well. No, uh, he did he, not. He, he, he struggled in this game. The, the, of course, this would be the game where you know Elliot misses the field goal and Sipos yeah. doesn't have a good punt. I mean, right, they'll they, rebound. They, they can't put it together. Yeah, you're right. I mean, we the only game where they had it all going, the Atlanta game, all three phases were phenomenal. Week one, of course. Right. Um, but I look, they're an upstart team. So you got a new coaching staff. I know we've been pretty, you know, I bludgeoned them pretty hard tonight, this coaching staff, particularly the head coach play caller. Mm-hmm. But it's our job is to go by what we see. We don't, we don't, we won't Monday morning at 6 a.m. Eastern, you're going to get it all for the coaching tape. No holds barred. We'll, we'll, we'll find out that's our, our next show. Mm-hmm. Today's Friday morning. But, uh, I, oh, by the way, I got to give Baldy and, um, and Jason Avon credit. They were off the hook good in our pregame show. My goodness. Thank you. Thanks to Baldy for doing it. And Jason, it was awesome. w- we hand it over to those guys. It was the, and so much of what they said wound up happening. And, and, and uh, Baldy brought up the issues. And both of those guys did a phenomenal job. We're just so lucky to have these guys. And you can watch the replay anytime you want on YouTube, correct? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's out there. You should see it because a lot of what they talked about you know, came to fruition in this game. Um, and has been throughout the year. And they were really good with their points. They're very descriptive, very X E and OE. People love that. So, um, hey, I want to bring to light one more thing on offense really quickly. And I, I split sure. this this blame, if you want, between both Sirianni, the play caller, and Hurts, the quarterback. But sure. if you want to beat the, the Bucks, and you want to, you know, you obviously have to play some ball control, sustain some drives. We talked about that. And that starts with first down. Now, I'm going to give you their first play on each of their first six possessions and what they netted, okay, in total Uh-oh. yards on each, each I'm drive. Scared. <laughs> minus two, one, four, minus one, incomplete, incomplete. That was the first oh. half. Oh. So their best first down play or first play on the drive was four yards. And if you remember, Adam, that was actually a screen to Sanders that was almost – that was this close to getting blown up by, I want to say, Ross Cockrell who almost yeah. threw it. It was sniffed out. They were lucky 
to get four yards on that. So uh, on their other four first downs that were not the first play of the possession, but a first down, they netted a total of one yard. Okay. And then there was the um, Jalen Hurts interception that came on first down. And then there was another incomplete. That was the most atrocious first down offense I have ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> and I can't even say it was a college offense. I don't even know what it was. It was I don't know what it was. There Remember was when I used college to... stuff. There was read option. Yeah. There was RPOs, but there were also yeah. just some throws it's that just, were bad. It, it's look, it was a train wreck offense. It was terrible for the most part. Uh, I, it, it, as you said to start the show, the final score looked like better than the game was. The mm-hmm. Bucks should have absolutely smoked them. They're up twenty seven. I'm sure Bruce Arians will go back and say we need we if we could go back we would have been more aggressive. Mm-hmm. But nevertheless, um, their third down offense was terrible. Eagles were three of ten. Uh, here, this 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 plays into what we've been talking about here on their offense. They only had 47 plays. It's not because their defense was so bad. It's because there was so many four and outs. Right. Or even if they got a first down that they couldn't get, they couldn't get, they couldn't keep getting first downs. It just, it was a pit. It was really tough to. It's getting harder and harder to watch this offense. They yeah. were terrible against Carolina. It's uh. Struggles of play caller, struggles of the quarterback, no run game, no attempt to have a run game. Though they attempted to run it late, which was bizarre to me. But well, Sanders I mean, had a couple nice they weren't there. expecting it. I almost don't want to give him credit yeah. for the good running because yeah, Tampa Bay, sure. well, hey, thinks they're going to be running okay. down twenty-eight to seven, right? I mean, like, <laughs> sure. yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But last thing, bad. last thing, last thing too. Yeah. Because what sure. we keep saying is, if you want to be fair to this team, you've got to give them the chance to improve. So anything that you say sure. you didn't like this week. You would hope that two, three, four weeks down the road, you're seeing a little bit better of a job. Well, this was week six, yeah. right? Go back to week two against San Francisco. If you remember that game, one of our criticisms of Hurts in particular uh, and the offense was, you know, you tried to take the shot plays against that depleted secondary that the Niners had. Um, and every time he did, when Hurts tried, he was either under throwing or late. He would throw the ball late and allow the coverage to catch up. Uh, there were a lot of plays like that other than the one shot play to Watkins that was good. So here we are a couple of weeks later now, and you look at those throws to Rager, um, and there was another one to Watkins. He was late. He has the ability to get the ball there. It's not yeah. a, not totally an arm strength thing, although if he did have a strong arm, you can be a little bit later. But he can get the ball there, but he takes too long for that to happen, and he allows the coverage to catch up to the receiver. That. That was week two, and now it's week six. So they got to get that worked out if they're gonna, if he's going to have yeah. a chance to really take a step forward. Yeah, I, well said. Uh, passive feet, footwork, getting good base, and the, the head coach. I'm still going to criticize Sirianni. He's got to do a better job of scheming these yeah. guys open. Uh, and Absolutely. and, and uh, the receivers coach Aaron Moorhead, he's got to do a better job. I mean, it's just I know they're young. I get it. It, you could, you, if you want to take a criticism of the front office, where's the veteran receiver to help these guys? Mm-hmm. Certainly a miss on that, their part on that one. Um, but there's talent on this. I know the Niners, I, I talked to someone with the Niners a couple weeks who said, man, their offense should be better just so, in terms of the talent. They, they, he goes, the guy goes, hey, they've got a lot of talent at wide receiver. They should be able to get a lot of explosive plays from a personal source. And mm-hmm. uh, I agree. So right now, it's coaches, you got you got to help these kids. These, they're talented. Quest Watkins flashes, but needs to be more consistent. He needs to be more of a physical pass target. And 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 Devontae Smith absolutely needs to play through contact better. They got physical with him. Mm-hmm. Um, it's another problem. So this is where he, he's not going to be able to put on 10 pounds in season. That, that's going to happen in the offseason. So the offense is a major work in progress, starting with the coaches. Players obviously have a – you know, quite frankly, to finish this off, Mm-hmm. It's on the players and coaches, but kind of equally to me. Everybody's got to help each other here. Yeah. You know, sometimes I wonder how critical we're supposed to be. I mean, like, look at the defense. We we fully and readily acknowledge that they don't have the personnel to really do what the coordinator wants. And they just don't have the personnel to stop the run out of two deep coverages. It's not gonna it's not gonna happen really yeah. well. Now that's why he's playing five man lines now and doing some different things. So yeah, and at the same point with this offense. I don't want to be say the same because they if Goddard's there, maybe it's different, and they do have Miles Sanders, and they do have Zach Ertz. But what well, would they throw it to him, though if Goddard was there? <laughs> That's a great question. I guess I shouldn't be as easy on the offense because they have a good offensive line. They've got yeah. tight ends who have experience. They have a running back. They're just not using him. They're they're asking wider the youngest, most experienced 
players on the team, the wide receivers and the quarterback are being asked to put together a really functioning, well-oiled offense. And, and that's just, that's a bad. Well, yeah, but, he, but here's where I'm not going to agree with you. Debo Samuel, right? Young receiver, phenomenal football player. Now, Brandon Ayuk has not had a good season. He had a phenomenal rookie season through a lock, through a no off season. Okay. Mm -hmm. I understand that's Kyle Shanahan. This is Nick Sirianni, first time play caller. But these Rager is talented. I, maybe the Eagles should have taken the second round or first round. Okay. Want to argue that? No problem. Mm -hmm. Devontae Smith is really, really gifted. Uh, Quez Watkins has been a little bit better than we expected. I know they're young, but you've got to help them. Help them. They can't that, do it on their own. They clearly can't. Th that's fair. I, I, I suppose that's fair. But if I'm going to counter argue that, I would tell you San Francisco, uh, if you go look at their offensive numbers this year, they suck. I mean, they're not very good. Yeah, but Debo's been great. Debo's been phenomenal. Been I I mean, it doesn't matter if one guy's good if the team's not that – if the team is 15th in scoring. I mean, that's – you know, which doesn't suck. The Eagles they're, are they're, they're right above the Eagle. I mean, think, let's see. No, they, but, I'm, but, but in general, Shanahan gets these guys open. That's, what, that's the point. Th this head coach has not done a good job of scheming these guys open. I know, as he said many times, not a secret, they use pick plays. Okay, mm -hmm. great. They, they, on the Earth's touchdown, there was a pick play. But what are you doing by scheme, by formation variation, you know, the, the pre-snap motion, which they don't, they, you know, you were talking about the last, we know they did it one game, but you, you know, you, you said many weeks ago, they just don't seem not to believe in it. Right. Well, if you don't believe in it, what, how are you going to help your guys? That's the point. Yeah. Well, there's a lot, there's certainly a lot to work on, <laughs> a ton to work on. All right. Let's, we'll get into the defense in a second. Uh, first, another week of the NFL season means another shot to win big at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. New customers can bet just $1 on any NFL game and win $100 in free bets if either team scores a point. The last 0-0 tie in the NFL was 1943, so I'd pretty much say this is a no-brainer. DraftKings customers can also get skin in the game with the same game parlays. Combine multiple bets from the same game for a bigger payout. The more legs you add, the more money you can win. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code ITB. Bet a buck on any NFL game and win $100 in free bets if either team scores a point. That's promo code ITB this week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL Got to be 21 or older, Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply in partnership with Meadows Racetrack and Casino. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right. Um, the defense. So, I mean, we, we did talk about the philosophy, and there, there were some change. There were some more blitzes. I think what stands out to me. Timely. Uh, like, they weren't a lot. They didn't blitz for it. No, no, they lot. did. Not a lot. Yeah. But they got what's... one big one the first half that, that was good. Yes. What, what stands out to me is obviously Davion Taylor played a lot again, and we weren't started. sure that they were going to do that. He started. So while I give the Eagles coaches credit for sitting Eric Wilson, which, you know, usually guys play their guys. He, he was brought in by the staff because of his experience with the Vikings. I give him credit. But you saw there in the second quarter, screen. screen they attacked Davion Taylor's side of the field relentlessly with screens and short seam passes. I mean, Poor they were, they went at yeah. him. They went at him. Yeah. And then they capped one of their touchdowns with a Leonard Fournette run up the middle, and Wirfs just got right into Taylor, drove him back. I mean, he's not a run. He's a coverage linebacker, oh not my, a run yeah. stuffer. Yeah. So they paid the price. I mean, you, these are growing pains. He's going to learn. You hope he gets better. But they clearly paid the price for, for that experience. I'm not saying Eric Wilson was going to do much better, by the way. I'm just saying you put an experienced, inexperienced guy out there against a very veteran offense. Very fair. Uh, I, I I'll say this. The fact that after the second quarter, they only gave up seven points the rest of the game, I was, I'm was i shocked at that. Now, mm -hmm. they, they they started to get a little bit more physical against the run. Uh, they did start Avery as the inbox defender, which the, which is what they've been doing lately. Mm -hmm. Edwards, TJ Edwards st uh, started, though. I, I have to find out what the tape looked like. Did he miss tackles? And as we said, Davion Taylor did start. Anthony Harris left the game in the first quarter of the hand injury. He later will return. Yep. Um, there, there were some missed tackles in the first half. Couple. They played so much coverage, and they left. They left so much room. That's why AB and then Chris Godwin was super active early. Then he, he did, I don't think he had a catch in the second half. Mm -hmm. 
Um, they started they started to tighten up their zones a little bit, and that, that helped. And I give Gannon credit for, for adjusting. He did a good job. That's all you're asking for. When, when you're really struggling defensively, mm-hmm. help your guys out. And that he's showing that. That's good. That's good that Gannon did that because uh, he had not done that against Dallas. Uh, when it didn't work, he just kept the, he came, kept the same coverage, and it never changed. And that was a mistake. And he did a good job. Kansas City, there wasn't so much against Kansas City that he didn't do a good job. Mm-hmm. It's the guys didn't carry the zones correctly. A lot of metal busts in coverage, particularly on on uh, Tyreek Kill in that game. And then this game, early, they had too many mental errors and assignment errors and stuff. But then they adjusted and did a good job. The, the thing, though, uh, you mentioned it. Man, Fournette was really good in this game. And he, I know he's not the same player he once was. Um, he Greg Cosell says he, he has this thing where he runs on the top of his toes. He has a mm-hmm. very odd running style. He's he doesn't run like runner. he did. did yeah, he he doesn't run like he did in college anymore. He, he's changed his running style for the worse. Yeah, but he had a good game uh, and very effective in the screen game. No question about it. OG Howard came out of nowhere uh, with no Gronk. He had a good game. He scored the touchdown and AB absolutely got him. Man, he's oof. yep, yep. Especially in there in that, on that last drive when he had that twenty-one oh, yard catch between yeah. Epps and McLeod. That was a you know mm. that was that was hey look that's experience winning out right there. Um, yep. that that's just. Tom Brady to Antonio Brown to when when you really need to play two Hall of Famers connecting right there, but yeah, otherwise um, there was one other there was something else defensively. I, I I mean there there were still some times where he's playing his his safeties out in Abington, um, you know, <laughs> not all the time because he did show a few cover what, one. What, looks, what but, by the way, what did Baldy say in the pre in the in the pregame show about that? <laughs> I forgot. He's he's like I don't know how you expect to stop anybody when your safeties are like three miles away from. Yeah, that was what? so funny. But Baldy is uh, made clear in our ITB TV interview. He doesn't like the he's, he doesn't like the scheme. But Gannon's Gannon's doing a little bit better job. Let's give him credit. You know, we we were where I kind of beat up Sirianni a little bit. I think you and I would agree that Gannon is starting to adjust a little bit, and that that's coaching. I I, I understand. And Sirianni is this is only sixth game call in plays. Gannon's sixth game call in plays. They right. have to get better. Uh, right. G- Gannon's getting better, and the head coach, play caller, does need to get better. He does, and people do. The people are getting annoyed with the soft zones on the outsides. But again, I, I don't know if you play Slay up on Antonio Brown, and you play Stephen Nelson, who's a scrappy corner, not a very speedy corner. You play him up on Mike Evans, and those guys miss. You know, like you know, you're going to be giving up that that deep pass, and they really did not give up a whole lot. I don't think they give up anything over the top, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, no, no, they try, like, yeah. right, right. They try with Evans. They they missed on it. Mm-hmm. Um, no, they, you're. That's a great point because they they I wouldn't. They definitely have their corners up sometimes, but seem like more off coverage. Mm-hmm. And that's but see, I think what Gannon thinks is okay if we play off coverage. We like our defensive line. We think we can win. But the problem is, and, and Baldy talked about this in the pregame, this is not the Panthers' offensive line here. Bottom five, and he talked. Baldy talked about Dennis Daly. He actually called the game on radio, right, um, nationally, and he was right. They, they were gonna, they were not gonna get Brady very much, and they didn't. Though when they were down twenty-eight-seven, Gannon made some adjustments, and they started getting home a little bit. Made Brady. Uh, because Brady does not move very well, and if you get right. near his feet, he struggles. And uh, they did a good job there. But you know, overall, uh, the Eagles' D line just could not get home enough. Oh, this is what I wanted to bring up. I thought it was okay. a good wrinkle by Tampa Bay. If you know, I don't know. I haven't charted them or anything, but they were under center quite a bit in this game. And um, it's some, yes, they yes. ran the ball well. And then that what that set up, they had a couple of big plays in the first half. As far I think, you know, moving the chains, getting first downs on. Brady going under center and then play actioning, and he would just roll a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left. But yeah. when he did that, there was zero pressure on him because a, I don't think that the Eagles expected him to roll anywhere, and b, when you're under center, they're thinking you're going to run, so that everybody's kind of collapsing on the run. He rolls out, buys just two or three sets, all he needs, and he was able to hit his targets. So that was a good wrinkle, I thought, for Tampa Bay because a lot of teams have not gone under center against the Eagles this year. Um, but you can only do that really when you're running the ball well and making the team think you're actually going to run it, which is like a foreign concept for the Eagles. But for other teams, it's like, 
the thing to do. You just run the ball. Like you said, Leonard Fournette doesn't get reused a whole lot. What do you have, like 20-something carries? 22, yeah. 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 The, this yeah. isn't going to go away, though. That's the issue, um, and we'll talk a little bit about the, the future. I, I, I don't think much is going to change um, on their inability to stop the run. They may face some teams with bad offensive lines, and uh, we'll see, but they're going to face some pretty good running backs, uh, whether it's Eckler or whether it's Josh Jacobs, if he's healthy. I mean, every every team seems to have a pretty good enough running back. If Chuba Hubbard, Hubbard can go over 100 on the Eagles, and not that he's bad, but, you know, I mean, it just – Stands the reason the Antonio sure. Gibsons, the Zeke Elliotts, and if Saquon's right. healthy or whoever are going to do the same. So that's going to be a bugaboo for the team going forward. Uh, all right, I want to put a tie on everything and just talk a little bit about what, what lies ahead. First, I want to remind everybody, check out our friends at phlsportsnation.com, enhancing the fans' experience with their coverage of Philadelphia sports teams. They are for the fan, by the fan. That is their motto. So make sure you read all their great work on phlsportsnation.com. See him on Twitter at PHL Sports Nation. And we'll pause real quick right now for a word from our great sponsors, including our friends at Sky Motor Cars. And if you stop into Sky Motor Cars out there in Westchester, PA, tell them Adam and Jeff sent you. You will get a great deal. All right. So they're through the really tough part of their schedule. We knew this. First six games were grueling. Two and four. To you and I, we're not surprised. I know some people thought they were going to, like, you know, be a lot better. I think reality has hit everybody now. There are a team in progress. But you got extra time here to prepare for Vegas, right? And then after Vegas is the Lions? Yeah, they're at – yeah, they're – they're three out of their next four away. They're at the Raiders uh, next mm-hmm. Sunday. Mm-hmm. They're at the Lions, who are very competitive, very competitive right. for, a, for a team that's very – doesn't have a lot of talent. Then they play at home against the Chargers. Chargers are really good. Yeah. That'll be very difficult. Herbert's playing out of his mind. And Mike Williams, contract year, maybe the NFL's best receiver right now in terms of uh, production. Then they're at Denver. Denver's got a really good defense. Quarterback plays a a problem. Mm -hmm. It's a winnable. That's a game I really think they could win. A home against the Saints and James Winston's very up and down. Good defense, though. At the Giants, at the Jets. Well, how did that happen, by the way? I know that is crazy. So those four, those four games are interesting. The next four mm-hmm. games, because I want to say the Eagles should be two and two. You'd be oh, happy with four. that. Yeah. But it's three well, road. I games. would say should be, but they have a chance to be. I, I, they, I agree. Yes, they have a chance to be. The Chargers game will be difficult. Mm-hmm. The Raiders game will be difficult because it's on the road. It's the first time they're going to be at yeah. Legion Stadium. And the Raiders are kind of having a lot of Eagle fans will be there floating right now. There will be you a lot of Eagles it. fans. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Lions game, I think everybody's going to think that's easy. But the last time the Eagles played the Lions in Detroit, they lost that game too. In fact, the last time the Eagles played the Lions at home, they lost that game. So I know everybody says, oh, the Lions stink, the Lions stink. Well, the Lions have stunk for 10 years, but they beat the Eagles for some reason. So it's not an easy <laughs> game because it's a road game. And as you just were alluding to, well, the way the Eagles' offense is right now, I don't think you can just rubber stamp any game and say they're going to no. win that game. They've got to get through yeah. these offensive pitfalls. But I, I think people, we could, I think you can feel good about them if in they go over the next four games they go two and two. Well, you know what's interesting? The Eagles are two and one away so far. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't. Know. They are. It's it's uh, the Carolina game. They, they obviously get out play for three quarters, but they found a way to win and. Uh, it's funny. I was texting with a personnel director uh, during the game. He go. He goes. He goes. Man, Philly. He goes. Philly's not very good. He goes. How in the world did they beat Carolina last week? I said, man, you don't know the half of it. But I said, I'll say this: they're pretty scrappy. Yeah, you they're block not, a punt. They don't, that helps. What's that? <laughs> you block a punt. That really helps. Yeah. No, but it's like it looks like a seven round knockout, and then all of a sudden, wait a minute, they're going to push it to nine rounds. How are they doing this? They look like they're out of it. You know. I right. text. I get I, it's funny every time I do this with Jeff before the game's over. Like, I think I text you at halftime or something when it was 28 7. I said, Hey, get ready. This is going to be, this is going to be, they're, they're, this is over. And then all of a sudden, they, <laughs> and they actually covered, they cover the spread. If you bet on it, you're like, Oh, you can't be serious. Yeah. No, good job by them. Betters at least can be happy. But I got yeah, the points. Get their right. Figured out. I had they 50 points. It. Yeah. Right on the nose. 30 mm-hmm. 20 I had it and it was 28 22. But man, what a choke by. If you bet on it, man, if you took the bucks, you got to be scratching your head. That's a tough one. Bad Somebody beat. looking at Jake Elliott at all. He was perfect in all of a sudden. Oh, that's right. <laughs> right. I'm just kidding. Right. Um, no, but four games, two and two, I think you feel comfortable about. I know we take it one game at a time here. I'm just trying to get a big picture look at this team because the schedule, they are through the difficult part. I feel like 
now, maybe even the coaches mentally will feel this way a little bit, that now you get a – it's a true evaluation. Let's just put our best foot forward. Let's not try to worry about going toe-to-toe with Kansas City's offense or the great Hall of Fame Tom Brady and the Super Bowl champs or even the Dallas Cowboys who they won't face for a while. Let's just – you know, you got some teams that you can beat here. Let's, let's, let's put together a functional game plan, do what we do, try to accentuate the strengths and see if we can't improve. Because that's what the rest of the season's got to be about. Steady well, improvement. Yep. Yeah. Um, let me see. So they have 11 games left. They're two and four. Looks like five of the 11 games are against teams with over 500 record. The Raiders, the Chargers, the Broncos. Broncos mm-hmm. are not very good. Hard, their offense But their not defense very good. is very good. Yes, it is. Yes. So that's three. Saints are three and two, I believe, somehow. Uh, <laughs> they, and, I thought they were two and two. Okay. Maybe you're right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and then they play the Cowboys week 17. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that, yeah, the uh, Saints are 3-2. Yes, they are 3-2. Yeah, you're right. They are. So, man, that is tough. Everybody they play has a – as a the, the Raiders are 3-2 and two or – Yeah. Or oh, yeah, two. yeah. Well, I mean, five out of five out of the 11 games are against teams with winning records. The other, uh, so six of them are not. Right. Uh, because they got to play Washington twice and the Giants twice. So there's four games – Right, the Jets. Do you think eight and eight can win that last wild card? I mean, you mean eight and nine? I mean eight and nine. No, that's right. Yeah. Do I mean eight and nine? Yes. Ooh, do you think eight and nine can do it. Um, right now. Okay, that's a great question. So right now, okay, Dallas is obviously winning division. Right. Green Bay will win the NFC North. Tampa will win the NFC South. Now the West is totally up for grabs. Now, Niners are on a free fall. They they they've regressed. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trey, you know Trey Lance is playing right now. Uh, well, we think we'll see when Jimmy G's ready after the bye. Right, if he's ready, they'll have to make a decision. Seattle's bad; they're just bad. Russell, Russell Wilson's out. Yeah, Russell Wilson's out. So, so, they're, they're gonna, so they're gonna I would say cool. okay. Um, Dallas in Green Bay and Tampa in are three. Mm-hmm. Arizona, so Arizona four. Arizona's four. Rams are five. Right, Who's six so and seven. Have... It's a great question. Who's six or seven? I mean, these are teams the Eagles are going to play or have played. They've already beaten Carolina, who's three yeah. and two. New Orleans yep. is on the schedule. Yeah. Um, Chicago is not on the schedule, but they're three and two. But three you know, and they're two, they're, they're shaky. probably going to be an up and down team all year. Yeah, well. shaky three and two, sure. Washington, good point, man. Figured, I am not burying Washington. I uh, just well, think they've got too much talent. Let me tell you something. Their defense is almost non-competitive. They that's are so bad defensively because that's where I know where their talent is. So I feel like they're going to figure it out. I guess it's it's almost hard to believe how bad they are defensively with that front, and right. they're playing too much individual football. Um, we'll probably do a, a mid-season show with Greg Cosell just to take a temperature of the NFC. Mm-hmm. Um, but got, got to watch out for the Vikings; they can be sneaky, but they, they got to let you down. Defense around, yeah. They 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 stole that game from Detroit. You were, yeah, you, you know, you make a great point. I had not thought about this. Uh, and by the way, it doesn't I, matter because if they, even if they, I mean, if they make it, it's good because you saw improvement. But it's not like they're going to be a uh, oh. But that uh, would be a great one, story. It, <laughs> but, but let's put it this way: that would be an amazing story. So I gave him seven to eight wins. That was my win range of th- you know I I did I, I grade every t- all thirty two before the season. I give Eagles uh, seven or eight. Mm-hmm. That's really to me where they're going to be now. They're two and four now. You, you know, we just went over the schedule. Right. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, they got a lot of heart. They have to win. They have to go six and uh, let's see. They got four losses, six and five here over their final. It's gonna be that be tough. Yeah, especially with all the road games that they have. Um, but but again, just to finish this off, they do have a lot of heart. They Sirianni, for much as I criticize him, he they play hard for him. They play hard Mm -hmm. for their coaches. But I do believe the coaches have to help them a little bit more. I I typically don't criticize coaches, but I'm I'm been a little bit underwhelmed with the offense and as you and I talk to people around the league you and I have ex- exchanged notes we're getting a lot of criticism for people around the league on the Eagles offense yeah that the coaches need to help them more mm-hmm. I know that they're young I get it but you know that going in they're young and what are you doing to help them and that I'd like to see that after this little mini buy a little self scout over the weekend from Mr. Sirianni but we'll see there you go. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of Inside the Birds, the leading podcast in Eagles Intel. We will have our normal Monday morning podcast come out. And we'll we'll probably make that tape. our tape review. Oh, it and will then, be. That's yeah, a lot. Yeah, oh, yeah, that will be. And then Wednesday's pod, which is normally a tape review, we'll just kind of go through the state of the team. I'm sure there'll be some transactions. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. yeah, we'll have a lot to to get through. We'll kind of look at the state of the NFL. We'll do a self scout. Well. 
Yes, we'll say we'll look at the state of inside the birds and see what we need to do better, and if we're putting <laughs> yeah. ourselves in the best position to succeed. Absolutely, and I'm sure Thank our, you, Thank our you, listeners Andy. will will help us figure out what we don't do well because they are certainly uh, not afraid to voice their opinions, and we appreciate that. Um, all right, make sure you check out our uh, executive producer's work, Hunter Brody. Uh, his work is uh, his YouTube channel. It's called Sports Talk with Broads. His Twitter account at Broads eighty one. His website Broads Media. Dot com. Have a great weekend, and as always, we thank you for flying with us inside the bird.